Hey there, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the Solar IMG's almost real-time image system. And basically the whole point of this system is, is for us to be able to track events from the sun to earth and watch the effects. So basically what we do have is here the ACE dials, and just to give you an idea, um, ACE and SOHO satellites hang here around the L1 Lagrange point between the sun and the earth, and stereo A and B hang out at the L5 and L4 points respectively. We also have the GOES satellites orbiting Earth and SDOs here roughly. So the ACE, what it does is it, it, it detects particles and, and whatnot. And so here we can see the solar wind density, the solar wind speed, pressure, temperature, um, the intensity or magnitude of the uh, interplanetary magnetic field, and the polar angle, which is facing somewhat north right now. We'll notice that when it's southern facing, that's when we're going to see our geomagnetic storms. So that's basically when the charged fields that are expelled from the sun have a magnetic polarity facing south, then that's when it will um, affect the Earth. Although the FEMIS mission recently has discovered that sometimes north-faced IMF um, can lead to geoeffective stuff. And so here we have um, a bunch of products from the Community Coordinated Modeling Center um, over at the Goddard Space Flight Center, and they do some amazing work. And just to show you, here they have a solar flare monitor, and it'll identify active areas on the sun that pose a potential threat for solar flares, and a, a probability index, which is quite low right now. And this, this via, uh, model uh, shows the magnetic field of the sun. And you can see little spots here, it's kind of interesting. Um, this is the Enlil model. And I guess someone over, at, someone over at NASA has a sense of, of humor. <laughs> um, we can see the sun is represented by the dot in the middle. And this asterisk, deno asterisk denotes Earth. Other inner planets are here. And we can see the colored bars represent the, the intensity of the solar wind. This isn't up to date, but you can see, just to give you a visual image, you can see the flares and roll the solar wind um, spinning around right there. The yellow dot represents Earth and other planets uh, are represented by different colors as well as the locations of the stereo A and B satellites. You can see there's the Lagrange points in the Earth and the Sun. If you look at this, this is about a top-down image. This is if we were looking sideways toward Earth to those little blobs. This would be like a sideways, another sideways image. Anyway, This is the uh, Batsiris model, and what it shows is the Earth, and the GOES satellite orbits is here, and this is the magnetopause standoff distance. This is the barrier. This is where our magnetic field pretty much begins, and you can see the density, in it, or the intensity, sorry, of the uh, energies as they buff it. It's kind of like the bow shock. That's why it's called the bow shock model, um, in, a, in a matter, because um, it's like the bow of a ship floating through the ocean gets bashed. So here we can see the images from SDO and it's really nice images here. You see these really nice nicely uh, formed sunspots are kind of breaking down a bit. And uh, this is the magnetogram and what it just shows is the magnetic field again on the sun. You can notice the different colors black and white denote opposite polarity positive and negative. And here we can see the stereo A and B Images. Oh, it's a UFO and aliens. No, it's not really. It's actually an image artifact, but whatever. Uh, I know I'm going to get flack for that. <laughs> Here we've got Lasco imagers on board Soho. These imagers are going to stay on when they close the other EIT uh, imagers off Soho because it's headed towards early retirement. Well, late retirement, actually. That thing's been up there for hell of years. The Soho team has done a great job on that, on that, little, on that little bird. So basically what that does is it blocks the sun's main brightness so that we can see the corona. And you can see the loop here. This might destabilize and shoot out a flare or an ejection. Here in the GOES satellite, we can see the SSXI imager that shows x-rays, active x-rays. Here we have an overlay from Catatania showing the numbers of the sunspot groups. And here we have the satellite environment plot. This is the from the ACE satellite. 
and it shows proton flux, electron flux, and the uh, magnetometer from GOES. The one thing you want to watch is electron flux, because when this one starts getting a little crazy, that's when we have the satellites starting to get affected, and the radiation hardening will uh, come into effect to protect the satellites from shutting down. Sometimes they will shut down to prevent damage. Um, here we have an average of the KP index, and what that does is uh, we, there's, there's geomagnetic uh, observatories all over the world. Here's a group in Canada. You can see the locations here on the right side and then the X, Y, and Z field. And these are located here in Canada, and you can see the locations of them here. This is the auroral zone. Some are down, some are not. These, you know, sometimes the auroral zone will go down. You can see a lot here in the CCMC image, uh, Google Earth KML file. You can check that out. Just go into the CCMC webpage. So when those are, when the when the uh, the magnetometers show deviation, we know that the magnetic field on Earth is being affected. Also, we have the radio flux. I'm not quite sure where this is. Learmonth. I'm not sure. <laughs> But uh, yeah. Also, we have a lot of the GOES products here, and they're colored differently depending on who's interpreting them. Some choose colors. I prefer the uh, Environment Canada just because uh, they're prettier. They show the cloud tops here, and so these cloud tops here are fairly cold. They're about minus 60, and then the inside is around. The yellow areas are minus 57-ish, and you know, getting cooler. And you can see this pressure front. So we can see changes sometimes in storms based on solar activity. Um, some people have seen some activity change at the poles. And we have some of the polar products here from AMRC. You can see the clouds, North Pole. We're going to be adding other ones for the South Pole. Um, and as well as the rural oval. So we can see the actual rural oval here, as seen from the Poe satellite. And also we have the USGS seismic map, so we can see seismic activity. Another good uh, tool would be Irish Seismon. You just punch that into Google and it'll pop up. And here we can see earthquakes. And the sun does make the earth shake, contrary to what some people would suggest. If you watch these for any length of time and you start getting used to them and following earthquakes as well, you'll see. Um, so, um, yeah, here we have the jet stream forecast, which will show us patterns. Here off Alaska, we got a nice pressure system that's migrating towards the east. And what else do we have here? We also have surface heat index, surface air temperature, sea surface temperatures. So, as you can see, Texas is pretty warm right now. Here's the key. Not too bad up here. It's kind of humid. And the sea surface temperatures, because sea surface temperatures affect a lot of stuff. You know, people are saying, "Oh, they're rising. Oh, they're falling." Yeah, you know, you can just hear, look here, find out for yourself. And you don't have to rely on sketchy science. <laughs> Empower yourself. All right. So yeah, also here another thing is the 10.7 radio flux. This is a good measure of solar activity, because it's measurable. It's not like the sunspot number where, you know, you, people can debate, oh, that's a real sunspot, that's not a real sunspot. This is just, you know, data. You know, we can measure that flux, and as you can see, there's swings. This is the solar maximum in, you know, 2003, and it's dropped steadily. This is the projected curve, and this is the actual monthly values. So as you can see, it's dropped, and it's kind of curving. You know, and, and that curve is pretty long, long curve. Usually it shoots right back up. So, you know, we'll see. This cycle is expected to have some wild swings. So, and just more for the x ray flux and the magnetic fields. You know, so we can see the, all the magnetic fields as they happen. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send an email. Thanks a lot for checking out this video, and thanks for your support, everyone. And, um,. Much thanks to all of the people who work very hard to make sure that we get all these images so that we can, you know, keep studying this stuff. And, yeah, amazing work. Big ups to the SOHO team, the stereo team, the SDO team, um, all the people out in the field who maintain all this equipment. 
and everybody, you know, from start to finish, this is amazing work, and humanity thanks you.